Even all, the name's Sandy Allen, and I'll talk about stuff. I feel so sorry for the people who clicked on this video expecting to see Orange Danny DeVito and Hairy Mike Myers, because that's not what I'm going to be talking about. Oh, no, 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 I'm doing something much more obscure. One of my favourite kids' authors has to be Dr. Seuss. We all know about him. It'd be hard to find somebody who hasn't read at least one of his books in their lifetime. And these books are so great that only six of them had quietly disappeared. I always liked when he wrote books under the name of Theo Le Sieg, when he couldn't be asked to do the illustrations and got someone else to do them for him. His books have been adapted for the big screen, the small screen, and the no screen. The screenless, which is what I'm going to be talking about in this video. One of the most unique Dr. Seuss-related things I've ever seen are these CDs. Produced between 1995 and 2010, they contain fully dramatised recordings of some of his books, read by three British comedians, Aid Edmondson, Rick Mayle, and Miranda Richardson, who are known for appearing in sitcoms such as The Young Ones, Bottom, and Blackadder. I listened to these religiously growing up, especially the Richie and Eddie ones. The Miranda Richardson ones? Eh, not so much. They were good, don't get me wrong, but not as good as the other two. And even as a fully grown manly male man, I still love them. So this video is going to be about this CD, The Cat in a Hat and Other Stories, narrated by Aid Edmondson. I've owned this for what seems like forever. Looking at the back cover, for me, the only thing that actually shows this was produced in 1995 is the photo they took of Aid himself. Whoa, look at this sexy man. Four classic favourites from Dr. Seuss with wild music and crazy sound effects. And the four stories on this are The Cat in the Hat, The Cat in the Hat Comes Back, Green Eggs and Ham, and Fox in Socks. But strangely, they're in a different order on the CD itself. Fox in Socks is second, Cat in the Hat Comes Back is third, and Green Eggs and Ham is fourth. And that's really been annoying me. Okay, first story now, Cat in the Hat. Doesn't really need an explanation, it's even been translated into Latin. If you've not read the book, it's quite similar to the cinematic classic of the same name, albeit without a Smash Mouth soundtrack or Mike Myers getting a stiffy. <laughs> and just to put that into perspective, that film came out in 2003. This is from 1995. Aid Edmondson is the OG Cat in the Hat. So let's get ready to play it then. And I hope you enjoy this as much as I know I will. The sun did not shine. It was too wet to play. So we sat in the house all that cold, cold, wet day. What's happening? I sat there with Sally. We sat there, we two. And I said, how I wish we had something to do. Surely you'd have stuff to do at home, like a board game or something. Stop complaining, you ungrateful little shits. Too wet to go out, and too cold to play ball. So we sat in the house. We did nothing at all. So all we could do was to sit. 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 And we did not like it. Not one little bit. What have these kids done to deserve this punishment? And then... something went... bump. How that bump made us... Oh jump. shit. Here comes Michael Myers. We looked. Then we saw him step in on the mat. We looked. And we saw him. The cat in the hat. I will never understand why they chose to portray the cat in the hat as threatening as that. Even the music changes dramatically, from from horror movie to playful cheeky ragtime. And he said to us, why do you sit there like that? I know it is wet and the sun is not sunny, but we can have lots of good fun that is funny. I've got sweets in my van and it's waiting outside. So come on kids, get in, let's all go for a ride. 
I know some good games we could play, said the cat. I know some new tricks, said the cat in the hat. A lot of good tricks, I will show them to you. Your mother will not mind at all if I do. Then Sally and I did not know what to say. Our mother was out of the house for the day. This does not seem right to me. But our fish said, No, no, make that cat go away. Tell that cat in the hat you do not want to play. He should not be here. He should not be about. He should not be here when your mother is out. It's not really made clear whether the fish talks all the time or just when the mother's away. Nonetheless, he's a bit of a stuck-up bastard. Now, now, have no fear, have no fear, said the cat. My tricks are not bad, said the cat in the hat. You sure about that? Why, we can have lots of good fun, if you wish, with a game that I call Up, Up, Up with a fish. <laughs> Put me down, said the fish. This is no fun at all. Put me down, said the fish. I do not wish to fall. Why have these kids not called the police yet? Bipedal cat, as tall as a man, walks into the house, offers to play with them, harasses their fish, and... Why are we not concerned? The cat then does his famous balancing trick, and even though this bit isn't particularly interesting to talk about, I do like hearing Aid go nuts and just scream in joy with what he's reading. Look at me! Look at me! Look at me now! It is fun to have fun, but you have to know how! I can hold up the cup and the milk and the cake! I can hold up these books and the fish on a rake! I can hold the toy ship and a little toy man! And look! With my tail, I can hold a red fan! I can fan with a fan as I hop on the ball! But that is not all! Oh no, that is not all! That is what the cat said. Then he fell on his head. And now he's dead. He came down with a bump from up there on the ball. And Sally and I, we saw all the things fall. Well, they say cats always land on their feet, but oof, that sounds like he got some pretty nasty injuries. And our fish came down too. He fell into a pot. He said, do I like this? Oh no, I do not. Shouldn't be surprised that he's complaining. He's in a bloody teapot for God's sake. Poor thing will probably have boiled up. Now look what you did, said the fish to the cat. Now look at this house. Look at this, look at that. God, this is depressing music. I will show you another good game that I know. And then he ran out, and then fast as a fox, the cat in the hat came back in with a box. OK, first of all, you've already established that's the sound of a door closing, so you can't use that for something else. Second, how the hell can the nonce in the bonds manage to carry a box that, by the look of it, weighs as much as a car? And considering he's so skinny, it'd probably crush him to death. Ow! Then he got up on top with a tip of his hat. I call this game Fun in a Box, said the cat. Where is this going? In this box are two things I will show to you now. You will like these two things, said the cat with a bow. Oh God, it's getting worse. I will pick up the hook. You will see something new, two things, and I call them Thing One and Thing Two. These things will not bite you. They want to have fun. I've got a pair of body parts that I call thing one and thing two, if you know what I'm saying. That's right, my eyebrows. Sally and I did not know what to do. So we had to shake hands with thing one and thing two. We shook their two hands, but our fish said, No, no, those things should not be in this house. Make them go. They should not be here when your mother is not. Put them out. Put them out said the fish in the pot. This fish is such a drama king and I love him for it. Now here is a game that they like, said the cat. They like to fly kites, said the cat in the hat. <laughs> no, not in the house, said the fish in the pot. They should not fly kites in a house, they should not. And the things they will bump, and the things they will hit. Oh, I do not like it, not one little bit. <laughs> 
<laughs> Everybody's just going absolutely mental here. Not just aid, but the sound effects department as well. And then Sally and I saw them run down the hall. We saw those two things bump their kites on the wall. Bump, thump, thump, bump down the wall in the hall. <laughs> Oh god, please! Slow down! I need a breather! Oh jeez! Thing two and thing one, they ran up, they ran down! On the string of one kite, we saw Mother's new gown! A gown with the dots that are pink, white and red! Then we saw one kite bump on the head of her bed! Oh, Jesus, that did not sound like a kite hitting a bed! That sounded like a bomb exploding! How how many laws has the Turkish Angora in the stripy fedora broken now? Then our fish said, look, look. And our fish shook with fear. Your mother is on her way home, do you hear? Oh, what will she do to us? What will she say? Oh, she will not like it to find us this way. Surely she'd at least hear what was going on out there. So, as fast as I could, I went after my net, and I said, With my net, I can get them, I bet. I bet, with my net, I can get those things yet. Where'd you get that net from? Now look at this net that I just found! Then I let down my net. It came down with a plop. And I had them, at last. Those two things had to stop. Then I said to the cat, Now you do as I say. You pack up those things and you take them away. Oh dear, said the cat. You did not like our game. Oh dear, what a shame. What a shame. What a shame. I'm getting a bit creeped out by the fact that there's no music or sound effects on this page. Just deafening silence. Then he shut up the things in the box with the hook. And the cat went away with a sad kind of look. Judging by this music, it sounds like we're off to the cat's funeral. But your mother will come. If you know what I mean. She will find this big mess. And this mess is so big and so deep and so tall. We cannot pick it up. There is no way at all. I love how melodramatically he says that. It's so big and so deep. <laughs> and then... Who was back in the house? Why, the cat? Have no fear of this mess, said the cat in the hat. I always pick up all my playthings, and so I will show you another good trick that I know. Given the mum's coming back home right about now, surely she'd see that a car with hands is driving into her house. She's a fucking idiot. And he put them away. Then he said, that is that. And then he was gone, with the tip of his hat. <laughs> then our mother came in, and she said to us too, did you have any fun? No, we fucking didn't, you old bitch. And Sally and I did not know what to say. Should we tell her the things that went on there that day? Should we tell her about it? Now, what should we do? Well, what would you do if your mother asked you? To be honest, if one of these kids told the mum about what happened, it'd probably end with a phone call to the police. Well, that's the first story done. Let's move on to the next one. Fox in Socks, or a tongue twister for super children. I'm not a child, but I am super, and I can do tongue twisters. How much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? Fox. Socks. Box. Nox. So there we have the four main Characters? Nox in box, fox in socks. What the hell happened there? Nox on fox in socks in box. And why did they decide that sound effect should go there? Socks on Nox and Nox in box. He's not in the box. He's just wearing it on his head. Fox in socks on box on Nox. Chicks with bricks come. Chicks with blocks come. 
Chicks with bricks and blocks and clocks come. Where exactly are they coming from? And how do they even manage to balance all that stuff on their heads? First, I'll make a quick trick brick stack. Then, I'll make a quick trick block stack. Those things don't look very well stacked. That is an accident waiting to happen. You can make a quick trick chick stack. You can make a quick trick clock stack. And that looks even less steady. And here's a new trick, Mr Knox. How did they get down from those stacks? Socks on chicks and chicks on fox. This foxy gentleman has quite the fan club. Everybody's wearing his socks. Fox on clocks, on bricks and blocks. Bricks and blocks on knocks, on box. OK, I take back what I said earlier. This is the riskiest one of them all. I mean, look, Mr Knox's toes aren't even holding up those anti-gravity blocks. And how's he supposed to breathe with bricks on his stomach? Do you know how much those things weigh? Please, sir. I don't like this trick, sir. My tongue isn't quick or slick, sir. I get all those ticks and clocks, sir, mixed up with the chicks and tocks, sir. I can't do it, Mr Fox, sir. I'm so sorry, Mr Knox, sir. I love the way Aid delivers Mr Knox's lines. He sounds so over it. And that tuba in the background is excellent. Here's an easy game to play. Here's an easy thing to say. I'm not quite sure what that's supposed to represent. Turning him upside down and then fiddling with his balls, maybe? New socks, two socks. Whose socks? Sue's socks. Who sews whose socks? Sue sews Sue's socks. Those are weird sounds to represent sewing. They sound like two people pulling on each other's body parts. Who comes? Crow comes. Slow Joe Crow comes. Who sews Crow's clothes? Sue sews Crow's clothes. Slow Joe Crow sews whose clothes? Sue's clothes. Sue sews socks of Fox in Socks now. Slow Joe Crow sews knocks in box now. What kind of orgy is this? Sue sews rose on Slow Joe Crow's clothes. Fox sews hose on Slow Joe Crow's nose. Why are they all picking on him? He did nothing to them. Mr Fox, I hate this game, sir. This game makes my tongue quite lame, sir. <laughs> the tuber of defeat has returned. And after that, we get thrown into an ASMR. We'll find something new to do now. Here is lots of new blue goo now. New goo. Blue goo. Gooey goo. Oh, Aid, stop, please. This is making me feel dirty. Gooey goo for chewy chewing. That's what that goo goose is doing. Do you choose to chew goo? No, 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 no. Fuck no. Let's move on. I don't like this. Bim comes. Ben comes. OK. Bim brings Ben broom. Ben brings Bim broom. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Ben bends Bim's broom. Bim bends Ben's broom. Why are they doing that? Bim's bends. Ben's bends. Ben's bent broom breaks. Bim's bent broom breaks. There's orgies everywhere in this story. And it doesn't help a bit that they start this bit off with... Bim comes. Ben comes. Ugh. Ben's band. Bim's band. Big bands. Pig bands. Bim and Ben lead bands with brooms. I love how they don't care that their brooms are broken, they just carry on regardless. 
Ben's band bangs and Bim's band booms. Pig band, boom band, big band, broom band. My poor mouth can't say that. No, sir. My poor mouth is much too slow, sir. Well, then, bring your mouth this way. Oh, I say. And then we have someone playing around with one of those duck whistle things. Luke Luck likes lakes. Luke's duck likes lakes. Luke Luck licks lakes. Luke's duck licks lakes. Duck takes licks in lakes Luke Luck likes. Luke Luck takes licks in lakes Duck likes. And then comes a rather questionable illustration. It's a bit of a wasted opportunity that Dr. Seuss didn't draw what the tongue twister's about. But when you put that aside, why is the fox looking at him so suggestively? Try to say this, Mr. Knox, please. Through three cheese trees, three free fleas flew. While these fleas flew, freezy breeze blew. Freezy breeze made these three trees freeze. Freezy trees made these trees cheese freeze. That's what made these three free fleas sneeze. Stop it! Stop it! That's enough, sir. I can't say such silly stuff, sir. Would make sense if it ended there. But then this motherfucker decides to ask the burning question. What do you know about Tweetle Beetles? She loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, not very much right now, but I'm sure they're going to teach me some really, really interesting stuff. So I thought I might as well take some notes. Well, when Tweetle Beetles fight, it's called a Tweetle Beetle battle. And when they battle in a puddle, it's a Tweetle Beetle puddle battle. And when Tweetle Beetles battle with paddles in a puddle, they call it a Tweetle Beetle Puddle Paddle Battle. And when beetles battle beetles in a puddle paddle battle, and the beetle battle puddle is a puddle in a bottle, they call this a Tweetle Beetle Bottle Puddle Paddle Battle Muddle. And when beetles fight these battles in a bottle with their paddles and the bottles on a poodle and the poodles eating noodles, they call this a muddle paddle tweetle poodle beetle noodle bottle paddle battle. And... Now wait a minute, Mr. Socks Fox. Oh God, another orgy. When a fox is in the bottle where the Tweetle Beetles battle with their paddles in a puddle on a noodle-eating poodle, this is what they call a Tweetle Beetle Noodle Poodle bottled, paddled, muddled, duddled, fuddled, waddled fox in socks, sir. This used to be my favourite bit because I always used to show off by saying it really fast. And I really think Abe missed a trick there by saying it as slowly as he did. I mean, come on, Abe, perk up a bit. You're reading a great poem. When a fox is in the bottle, with a tweedle in the battle, with the paddles in a puddle, on noodle eating poodle, this is what they call <gasps> a tweedle in a noodle poodle, battle battle battle, battle while the fox in socks, sir. Okay, is that is that it? Are you just gonna are you just gonna leave him in that bottle with the with all those beetles? Nice going, Mister Knob. Fox in socks. Our game is done, sir. Thank you for a lot of fun, sir. And so is this video by the looks of things. I didn't really want to do all of this CD in one video, just because it's a bit too much to cover. So I'll end this video here and call it part one. And I'll see you in part two.